everyone. Welcome to Changing Gears, a worn and wound podcast where we talk about everything gear, EDC, travel, photography, and in today's episode, even aviation. I am joined on today's podcast by Aaron Daly and Paul Hooker, uh, our aviator couple based out in Phoenix, Arizona. I went to visit Aaron and Paul back in September and spent some time with them at one of the airports they frequently fly out of. And we just got to hang in the hangar a bit. Um, they showed me around the plane and their sort of check process before they go out and fly. Uh, it was an incredible day, so much fun. And I was so glad that I could get them on the podcast uh, to talk a little deeper about their inspirations for getting their pilot license and learning honestly how it's not that difficult to learn to fly. Before we kick off today's episode with Aaron and Paul, I quickly want to thank Citizen for making this episode possible. As some of you may know, Citizen celebrated 35 years of the ProMaster line this year, and these watches were created to meet the demands of professionals active in the most challenging environments in the air, on land, or in the sea. I personally love Citizen's slogan for the ProMaster line, which is go deeper, go higher, go further, right? I think it's so good. And um, I think that a lot of watch brands have super cheesy slogans or honestly, some that don't make sense. But this one's really fitting for them and quite honestly, inspiring on that sort of like Nike, just do it level. I, I think this is one of the things that Aaron and Paul really connected with, uh, which is the ethos of Citizen. And Paul specifically, if you haven't read or looked at the uh, enthusiast spotlight we did on Worn and Wound, definitely check it out. I'll link it here in the show notes. But Paul wore the new special edition ProMaster Sikorsky S92 that was produced in collaboration with the American uh, aircraft manufacturer. This watch takes design cues from the Sikorsky uh, S92, which is an all-weather helicopter that flies worldwide, uh, does search and rescue, utility and transportation missions. Um, now, while Paul and Aaron don't fly helicopters, we definitely talk about it on today's episode. Um, and on the wrist, honestly, it's so beautiful. It's a stunning blue in person. And I know some of you guys are looking at this watch and like, oh my gosh, 46 millimeters, it's a lot, which can be large, I will say, but on Paul's wrist looks great. Like, go look at those photos, let me know what you think. But the lug to lug is so short. And I think Paul had, um, I, I don't know, I would say like over just a seven inch wrist. I think it looks great. It's something that I could even see me personally wearing. Some of the things that I know were important to Paul and honestly to aviators in general are those advanced functions of the watch. Um, so this thing includes an atomic time clock synchronizations. So that means w while they're traveling, it is constantly changing the time to be as accurate as possible. There is a time adjustment uh, available in 43 world cities, a one one hundredth of a second chronograph that measures up to 24 hours. There is a perpetual calendar. There is a GMT dual time. There is two alarms, uh, 99 minute countdown timers, uh, there's a backlight display. There's a UTC display. There's a, a power reserve indicator. This watch has literally everything that you can imagine. Um, and while it's packed with all these functions, it also includes eco drive movement. So this thing will charge in the sunlight and the battery will rarely have to be replaced. Uh, but thanks again for Citizen for sponsoring today's episode. Um, and huge thanks to Paul and Aaron for being awesome and so kind. Uh, I hope you uh, enjoy the episode. And until next time, we'll see you later. I was going to tell you guys, actually, like I was on a set maybe last week. Yeah, it was last week. And the model that we were working with was just like, wait, this is your job. Like you get to just shoot watches all the time. And I was like, well, well, not all the time. Like I, I do other things. But he just like was in awe that there's this huge industry. And, and honestly, for any photographer, really, it is sort of like and, and you guys know this and we'll get into this soon, too. But like as photographers, like it is sort of a pinch yourself moment when you're out there shooting. You're like, wait, I get to do this for a living. Like, this is absolutely crazy. Yeah, and Garrett, I know, I know you feel the way that way too sometimes. A hundred percent. I feel yeah. like there's so many different like fields or like careers out there. And it's just like, the more you learn about them, like I'm like, oh, photography is such a cool field. And then you find all the different niches or branches unto itself in it. And you're like, this is crazy. I didn't even know yeah. there was like, you could make a career out of this type of photography. I know. If, if only I knew then, I could have saved so much money in college. I know. <laughs> we have had this conversation so many times. I so know. many times. 
Well, speaking of that, so I know you guys are obviously your photographers and pilots now, but I'd, I'd like for our audience to know, like, what did you guys do before you became pilots kind of uh, and, and photographers really full time now? Yeah, so my undergrad, I studied nursing and business administration. So right out of college, I went yeah. straight into nursing. Yeah. And uh, started in Kansas City shortly after I started travel nursing. And then I did travel uh, in- intensive care uh, unit nursing for five years. So I was a nurse total wow. of seven years. That's crazy. Um, yeah. And then Aaron. Yeah. Well, we kind of popped around because <laughs> he was travel nursing. And so... Um, like COVID, we were in the middle of COVID while he was like on a a travel assignment. And I had just graduated from college and I'd signed up to take my boards exam, but it got canceled because COVID and stuff. So I was like, well, what do I do? (laughs) um, We were, we had friends that were realtors and luckily enough, they were like, Hey, Aaron, if you can learn to shoot photo, like we'll hire you. So it gave me like something to like learn to do. So I shot real estate photography for like a hot second. Um, and then when Paul's assignment got moved to Arizona, I was like, well, I'm gonna have to rebuild like my network. And I was like, I didn't, wasn't really loving real estate photography at that point. And so I was like, I might as well do like what I want to do or like try a different field of like yeah. photography. Cause I really think I could enjoy this. And so that's when I dived into like weddings. Um, and I was like, I really think I'd love this. And I, I fell in love with like the shooting of people and the yeah. capturing, like the creativity that comes with photography. Mm-hmm. Um, and like went full time within three months. And like, that's kind of what like kept us here. And so that's yeah. awesome. It's been kind I, of cool. Like how like little things of like the past have kind of like played more into also like the content creation side. And yeah, like, totally thought that like real estate photo would let into this, which also <laughs> now plays into like, other things we're doing with our content. Yeah, absolutely. It is kind of a crazy story. And I know similar to you, Paul, like I came from healthcare working in PT and never would have imagined I would have ended up in shooting watches at some point. And I'm sure Garrett too, like Garrett came from a field that was, you're like a marketing degree, right, Garrett? Yeah, marketing degree. And then I was working in uh, Alcbev procurement and then AV procurement as well before I jumped over. Yeah, I mean, kind of, yeah, kind of media, but like not, not exactly this. And so, yeah, Yeah, it's, it's, I know we all got sucked in and we're stuck forever because it's amazing and it's awesome. Um, Exactly. (laughs) I have so much respect. And I think I told you guys this on our shoot, like shooting weddings is like my, my nightmare. I'll be honest. I am (laughs) so scared because I just have this like thought in the back of my mind that, um, first off, I think there's a lot of pressure involved more than I have ever dealt with. Cause you guys are like, there's one moment, one chance you have to capture it. Right. Um, and so that's a lot of pressure to have on you, like shooting someone's big day. And on top of that, you're dealing with family members, you're dealing with mother-in-laws and like, I can only imagine they're like, you should do this. And you, sh-, and I just, I'm like, oh my gosh, that would drive me nuts. <laughs> yeah. There's definitely a lot of different factors with it. Yeah. But I think that's, what's kind of fun. And like, I don't know, you grow up in like, every family has different crazy dynamics. Yeah. So like, sometimes I'll have a lot of brides, like, I want to apologize in advance about this person. <laughs> I'm just like, listen, we all have that person in every yeah, family. Like, so you just learn to like, I don't know, kind of roll with it and expect the crazy, but also yeah. like, I think it's like when you really, when you have good brides and grooms, like the rest of the crazy doesn't matter as much. Yeah. So we really try to like decipher who we work with and like who we document. You like kind of, days. kind of vet them out a little bit before. Yeah, exactly. See, how, see what level of crazy they are, you know? Exactly. You know? Oh, we're all like, a little crazy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Which but turns into a, like a lot of fun for us because we build relationships with our couples yeah, and, um, we start with an engagement shoot before the wedding, and so we show up to the wedding day, and we're like, hey, "You know them, we're friends. Yeah. You know, let's just go have fun and let's shoot this day and, and celebrate yeah. you." Yeah, yeah, and knock on wood, that's worked out pretty well. So. Yeah, <laughs> like nothing <laughs> yeah, too awesome. crazy. Yeah, and it allows you guys some flexibility too. I think with your schedules to to get to fly a lot and get to take all these epic trips that you guys go on. Um, yeah. Something I want to talk about as I look at this, like, is that a blade from a like a like a plane oh. behind you. Is that it's what a that fake is? one. Don't look okay. at it too close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. As I'm like looking at that, I'm reminded that you guys are pilots and I'd love to like have our audience hear a little bit about how you like what inspired you actually to get your, your pilot's license in the first place. And what was that process like? Yeah, I for me, it's been like ingrained in me since I was a kid. My my grandpa was a Navy pilot. And then he flew for Alaska Airlines uh, for 40 years. And he did wow. some crazy stuff up in Alaska with these 
big jets. He was going into like gravel strips, flying supplies up to um, up to small villages up there. And so I've always heard cool stories from that growing up. I always had like little planes I was playing with and playing with like Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, so yeah, so that's always been in my head, but I never thought it was like realistic for me to become yeah. a pilot. Like I always knew how expensive it was and um, yeah, I'd never saw it as a secure job. So I ended up going nursing and I loved nursing, but one time I was really bored on an assignment. Um, and while I was there, I was able to like start taking some flight lessons in Louisville, Kentucky. Like I didn't know anyone. So I was like, shout okay, out. That's where Garrett's from. <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, He's no a Louisville way. boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Born and raised just south. And then I went to University of Louisville for my undergrad. No way. Man, that is a fun town. There's good it, uh, food there. Yeah. Yeah. Really a lot good of good food. foods, a lot of little hidden niches you have to kind of like get off the beaten path to find, but very much like you find your spot and it's it's a good city. Yeah. Totally. It is a fun city. I completely agree there. Yeah. So I, I started training there and um, kept training, ended up out in Fresno, California on an assignment and I finished my license there. And that's while Aaron and I were newly married and we were just out there. COVID had started. And so aviation became this like way for us to get out of town during yeah, COVID, yeah. you know? So we oh would like gosh, fly. Yeah. yeah. So we would like fly to the coast and um, we would overnight um, like go grab a hotel, grab some good food on the coast and then fly back. Oh and, my gosh. Um, that sort of started showing us a little bit of like the adventure side of flying. And yeah. it was just a, the quick taste of it, but yeah. Um, that's kind of how we started getting into the adventure side of flying. Yeah. And that's kind of like what got me into it. Like I didn't grow up around aviation. So like getting my pilot's license was like, honestly, like never a goal of mine. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like when Paul got his, we started doing these like weekend trips. And to me, yeah. it was like, I, I've had the love of travel for so long. And so for travel to become so much more accessible and like attainable by having your own plane, um, yeah. it was just like, well, we didn't have our own plane, but to rent and stuff. Yeah. Um, it it provided so much source of like an adventure for me. And then that's what I was like, you know what? I think I want to get my pilot's license and yeah. um, challenge myself to do that. That's awesome. And from what you guys have told me, like getting your pil pilot's license, it's it's a process, but it's not like Im impossible. It's not super long. I think I think people think that it is. And that probably like turns them away from getting it or thinking it's even possible. Like you mentioned, Paul, like was never really on the map. And then yeah. here you are bored and you're like, let me just get this. And you did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. and, and, and Aaron, you got yours relatively quick too. How long does it typically take to, to uh, finish the whole process? We have friends that have done it in three months. Wow. And um, it can, yeah, it can go pretty quick. The requirements really just make sure that you're safe in the, in the airplane. Yeah. Um, so it's only it's 40 hours of flight time, which sounds like not much at all. Um, <laughs> that does not sound like a lot. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but as my uh, examiner who like set, saw if I was ready to have my pilot's license or not, um, my FAA examiner, as he told me right after I got my license, he said, hey, this is your license to learn. And oh, I think that's okay. really yeah. where they um, where they start you. And yeah, so it's it's about 40 hours of flight time. And it can be done pretty quickly. So yeah, Do you they can't have... go fly for like airlines afterwards with like yeah. 40 hours and stuff. There's, there's so many more like, levels. Yeah, there's yeah, different but levels, to, like, right? Just... Exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to like go for like a fl fun flight or just fly yourself somewhere like you yeah. can do that after. I would suppose like similar to driver's license, like you get your driver's license doesn't mean you can go drive like a semi basically. Exactly. Like you have to get like, you know, some, some training involved in, in, like flying those bigger planes, I would assume. Yeah, like you're still flying the little grandpa planes with that license, but yeah. <laughs> you know, you're having fun yeah. at least, and you're getting up and you're going places. That's awesome. Can you take classes online, or do you have to go in person? I mean, obviously you have to like fly, but like some of the more educational stuff. I was curious if you can do online. Yeah, there's tons of resources now online. Like a lot of the ground, like a lot of the ground knowledge is what we call it. Um, that's all pretty much online now. So wow. you can pay to meet with somebody in person, which um, can be really nice to solidify things, but yeah. a lot of people like start with their ground school online, um, yeah. yeah, and get their written exams done and stuff online. So that's crazy! Um, wow. Yeah, and learning now is so different, even than when I learned, like started learning back in 2018. It just keeps improving. Um, yeah, with tech. With tech, yeah. That's awesome. What uh, 
like what ambitions do you guys have? Because I know, Aaron, you talked about like doing I don't even know what it's called, but like acrobatic stuff in planes. And you're you're currently like in the process of getting a license to do that, right? Yeah, I'm going to be getting some training. Dude, um, this girl's crazy. <laughs> She's like next level over here. <laughs> Total badass, yeah. yeah. I don't know about that. I just have fun with it. Um, but yeah, we're going to be going up to Utah um, in a couple of weeks. And I'll be doing some aerobatic training um, with a school up there. We did our tailwheel with them last summer. And the wow. instructors there and the owners are like such cool people. And um, when we were in Thailand this past summer, I got to do a little bit of aerobatic flying there. And I got like my first flight doing it. And I was like, I want to learn to do this myself. So yeah. they're going to be training us back up there in Utah. And I think it'll be a ton of fun. So and for those that, that don't know, this is like playing going upside down and like flips and all that kind of stuff. Exactly. Oh yeah. God. Flips, turns, rolls. <laughs> Dang. That's so exciting. That's that like the stuff you see on like Top Gun and, and stuff. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> that was her first flight ever, um, like doing aerobatics there in Thailand. And she gets down on the ground and I just, I see her when the door opens up and she has the biggest smile on her face. Yeah. And then she gets out and she's like, Paul, we're getting one of these planes. Like, <laughs> like, like this guy ruined her. Like that, that's the type of flying she wants now. It is it fun. a different, is it a different plane that, that, yeah. Does? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's different. The ones that we fly right now, we couldn't do that kind of stuff. Okay. With, so, okay. um, yeah, we'll be going up and learning with their planes. And That's so interesting. I see. I would have landed and I would have just had vomit all over me. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was wondering. I was like, am I going to get sick during this? But like, yeah. I actually felt so controlled. Like, yeah, it didn't hit like any. I feel like usually you hear about people like, oh, I had like two G's or like, you know, how those fighter pilots are like, yeah. I went to four G's or whatever. <laughs> um, and like, it was literally nothing like that. It was just so controlled. Um, That's awesome. what he was doing. And I'm, I'm sure, sure with, with you, like more advanced stuff, you get into it. But Well, yeah. And I was going to say, like, with you honestly being the pilot, you're not going to feel that at all because you're going to be in control the whole time. It's like when yeah. you're driving a car, you're never sick. But when you're in a passenger of an Uber, <laughs> you're like, oh, God. <laughs> That's a good comparison. Yeah. Comparison. It's like when you're not in control, you're not expecting like the little bumps and things and turns and, that you would be if you were like actually driving it. Um, can you tell I get sick a lot, like in the car? I, mean, I have a little <laughs> bit of motion sickness. I mean, honestly, I just pop a drama mean at this point, and I'm fine. Like I can get through any crazy Uber, <laughs> but uh, you know, it's it's not fun for sure. Um, I will say I've never done flips in a plane. <laughs> I don't know if I, I don't know if I'm brave enough for that. That's that's pretty cool though, and very we'll exciting. Have to get you to do some cat when I get some training. I'll take you up, okay? <laughs> And as you said, if you're the one doing them, you won't get sick, right? So yeah. we'll just yeah. make you do them. Oh, awesome. That sounds wonderful. <laughs> we'll stick Garrett in there, too. Yeah. Garrett, I, how are you I might want to stay on the ground for that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I do, like, I do think it would be cool to do some, and I'm sure you guys do this all the time with flying, like, some great photography from up there. Like, that does sound pretty exciting. Garrett, you got to shoot out of a helicopter recently, which was pretty exciting, no on your way. citizen trip, actually, to Canada. Um, how was that experience for you? Cause you, you guys looked like you were like the doors were open and like, it, right. You had like doors open, you were shooting outside or inside. No, we were all shooting through the, I guess it's like a Lexan. Uh, it's like an acrylic that's on the windows. Okay. Um, so dealing with a little bit of like water spots and streakiness, mm. oh, yeah, but, um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's just vastly different. Like if you think about like your typical, like I'm going to go fly your, facing forward or you're looking backwards for something like that's the motion that you're in yeah. and like every time we would fly in the helicopters they'd be like all right who wants the jump seat which is you know <laughs> sideways and I'd be like all right yep that's me so like i love flying in regular planes have no issues absolutely love flying a helicopter i'd really? commute to work in a helicopter if i could wow. but going sideways through the air is a very different feeling but absolutely wonderful yeah. Have you guys thought about getting your, your helicopter license at all? Is that a, any sort of interest to, to either of you? I think it'd be really cool. Yeah. It's like double the price of getting your pilot's license. So we'd have to like figure oh. some things out with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's like, I mean, I think it's freaking epic. We did a flight this summer too in our first, or I guess it was my first helicopter flight. Um, and that just, I mean, it's, it's really, really cool. There's yeah. this guy so on an airport um, that we fly out of. His name's Larry. He's like 88. <laughs> and I went, I hung out with Larry one day. This is probably six months ago now. And come to find out, Larry has this little helicopter 
based at one of the airports around here that has one seat in it. Oh my god! <laughs> he'll just go and jump in that helicopter for lunch, wow. ride up to the top of a mountain nearby, land it, eat like looking over Phoenix, and yeah. then come back. And I'm like, okay, that's pretty cool, yeah. you know, to be able to do that. Totally. Well, I can imagine like a helicopter can probably you can probably land in in different places because you guys need a runway, right, for the most part to take off and land, whereas yeah. helicopter yeah. can just literally like lift out of anywhere. Um, so I'm sure you could do some pretty epic like camp trips and stuff like that out of a. But you guys That's have done so some camping, true. right, from like flying and stuff. Yeah, we actually we just got back from um, a camping trip. We were in Oklahoma. Um, and like meeting up with some friends we met at another air show and we all flew down to a fly in and a fly in's like where all these planes like fly in together and then we all just like camped like around these like this airport um, oh wow and so yeah i got to see some competitions stuff? and um a little bit of aerobatic flying and that's awesome it was cool that's great that they have it set up for like campers to come because like that's what i would want to do if i if i flew just go places and camp overnight and stuff it was so beautiful too. Cause it's like, it's, you're landing on this grass strip. So it's not even like a typical, like, I don't know, hard like landing spot. <laughs> like it's not LAX. Yeah. yeah it's not LAX. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, it's really pretty. It's like in the middle of the Ozarks. Um, and then you have like a river right next to you. And then like all these little like picnic. Wow. T- it was a really nice spot. That's awesome. It sounds yeah. incredible. What's been like your sketchiest, like runway that you've ever seen? Like, has there been yeah. some pretty rough ones? That's a good question. Um, well, I guess the sketchiest, well, one of the sketchier landings we've made, we, uh, so you don't always have to land on a runway. Uh, (laughs) you can can land on off airport is what we call it. Okay. And this last weekend we landed on a sandbar. Yeah, that's true. Which was really, really cool. Um, it's, it's safe, but man, that sandbar was bumpy, you know, it definitely, I was like, (gasps) the tires were sinking in. You're like, (laughs) oh, Yeah. Wow. It's a whole nother like side to flying, um, landing off airport. But yeah, I know that that sandbar was pretty bumpy. And so as you're coming in, you're landing on it and then it's like bump, 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 bump. And you feel like you're going to flip over. But oh my God. It's safe. Yeah. It's, safe. it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Quotation marks. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and I know you guys like, you've told me before, like flying is so much safer than driving. And like people obviously like me have this like fear of getting in smaller planes. And you said you sort of like debunked a lot of that with some of the things you've told me. Um, What kind of advice would you give people that are like looking into getting their pilot's license and like first steps? Is it to like look for local places or airports? Or is there any other sort of advice you would give them? Yeah, we always um, recommend like there's I think a lot of people don't understand how many airports there are in the U.S. Like they just know the main airports they fly into for like personal flights. (laughs) So like if you find like one of these small airports near you, um, a lot of schools or even just like pilots that own their own plane offer discovery flights where they just like take you up for a flight. And so then that way, like you get to fly like on my first discovery flight before I decide I want to like delve into all of this. Like yeah. they had me do the takeoff and like, Oh wow. Um, Without knowing yeah, they anything? like help you out the entire way. Jared's face right now. He's like, Whoa. <laughs> 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 I just think of like every time I'm somewhere shooting, someone's like, Oh, I'd love to try photography. And like the fear I have handing like a, a $3,500 camera set up to someone new <laughs> and then knowing that like, planes are an order of magnitude way more expensive than that and like yeah. okay cool it's your first time like you take off you fly like blows my mind <laughs> oh 100 i know i like looked at the guy i was like i don't think i'm qualified for this but thank you <laughs> that's great um but yeah these discovery flights are awesome because then it gives like a little taste of like how the lessons go and yeah. like gives you like a feeling of like do i actually want to pursue this and then that way you're not like dumping like a whole like lump sum of money into it yeah. Um, or like delving into it before you know you actually want to do it. And discovery flights normally cost like two hundred dollars, and so you'll oh, you'll yeah. like go, you'll look at the aircraft. Usually, the walk uh, whoever's taking you up will walk around the aircraft and explain how things work. Yeah, and then they'll have you sometimes start the the plane, and wow. so you're like very much so yeah. doing it. So it's a different experience than than I had ever had when I went on yeah. my discovery flight. And then um, yeah, you go up and you fly for about an hour. And then you come back and a lot of times they'll debrief with you and see yeah. like, 
if you have questions and stuff. And then it's just a good first dip your toes in the water, see yeah. if it's something that you like, totally. see if you actually get motion sick up there because <laughs> yeah. it is a different feeling than yeah. flying a big airline. We've had friends that have never flown in these little planes yeah. that a lot of times have difficulty in big jets. And they're yeah. like, oh, it's completely different. Like you can see everything. You feel yeah. more of the movement, but not in a bad way. You like yeah. feel more like you're in One control. The, yeah. And um, yeah, so I highly recommend Discovery Flights. Like yeah, I think they're great. so cool. It's a great Christmas gift for a buddy who likes crazy things, or crazy things like yeah. things from <laughs> yeah. or, or um, yeah, I think it's I think it's a good taste. Oh, no, yeah, for sure. And especially like as you begin the training process, um, I can only imagine like it's probably a while before like you're flying because you have to go through all like the processes and like all the safety information. And so like this is a good taste to like go ahead and get your hands on a little bit, get the taste of it. And like, again, know for sure that like that's exactly what you want before you start to like go down like the school route and then like the training yeah. process of it. That's exactly. awesome. Yeah. That's what's so been uh, what's been your your favorite trip? And you might have different answers. Like, what's been your favorite trip so far? I don't know. The one we Not got to back put you at the spot. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I what's know. That? The one we just got back from was pretty cool. We had never been out to, like, the Ozarks or anything. And then the flying we got to do was incredible. So we flew, like, we got our tailwheel endorsements, which is basically in, like, traditional aircraft that most people learn in. Yeah, it's usually one wheel in the front and then two in the back, so you land like back forward. Oh, um, okay. But then we got these like ratings last year where it's um, two wheels in the front, one in the back, and it's so it's a little bit more complicated with steering because if you think of like, um, you know, those carts that like um, luggage carts, or I guess even the that you put them on, and like if you push one way, it's fine. Yeah. But then sometimes it gets like wobbly, and you gotta like kind of steer it a little bit more this way to yeah, get. Yeah, it's like the Lowe's Home Depot uh, cart. Yes, yes. And, and if you like yeah. shove it forward, it'll just spin around. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of like the plane that we like we're learning to fly. Like we got this wow. new rating. And so it's a lot more like technicalities of what you gotta like pay attention to. Yeah. Um, but we got to go up and fly like a few of them this past week, and we got to go up with this one guy. Um, his name's Trevor. His Instagram's like Dozen Aldridge. He's super, super cool, such like a down earth person for yeah. how much he's accomplished. Um he like trains fighter pilots um, wow. and teaches them dog fighting and stuff for a living. Also flies for American and then also does a ton of this backcountry aviation. So he took us up in his like own uh, aircraft and was doing all the, this like flying that was like right above a river. And he's like wow. getting like, so close to the trees and he's like, yeah, we're only going to go like 10 feet from the trees because it's a little windy. And I'm like, I would never even get that close to a tree, but okay, Trevor. And so he's like flying below like the tree lines, like over the river. Wow. And there was one, he took Aaron up first and then me next. And there's one time we were in the river and he was like, yeah, so the trees in front of us are too narrow for our wings to fit through. So I have to turn sideways. And oh then he just gosh. like wings up and like turns sideways mm -hmm. and goes through these trees, like straight out of Top Gun. And I know, yeah. freaking Maverick over there. Yeah. That's awesome. So that was really cool. So I, is there like, I guess there's not really a limit of how low you can go when you're flying in certain areas. I can imagine probably when you're in like residential, obviously not. But yeah. I guess yeah, exactly. Older, in certain areas, good. yeah, it, there's there's no limit. But then, like, as soon as you get above like structures or yeah. like people, it's like you got all these limitations and stuff. Oh but we were like in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've heard. Cause I I used to live in Phoenix for about a year after high school, and I do remember like there was several like plane crashes because of the way the mountains are in the city at night, yeah. and because it is so dark there, there was a lot of. I remember just reading about a lot of crashes in the side of the mountain. So, I mean, and you guys are in Phoenix. So, I mean, I don't know if you hear about that. Maybe that's not a problem. I would hope. And maybe it was just like an off chance that I, some I will say like technology has gotten really good. Yeah. Planes now. So I haven't heard of anyone. Yeah. Going to the side of a mountain around. <laughs> yeah, here. that's good. Um, but. But yeah, no, it's possible. I mean, at night, it gets so dark out. If you don't yeah. have the right avionics, if you're not paying attention, yeah. Or the education. <clears throat> or the mm -hmm. education. Like, of course, there are there are dangers and risks. Like, it's, yeah. it's not a... Yeah, there's definitely dangers and risks to it. But those are things that we really prioritize our education and safety in, yeah. in the plane. So those things don't happen. And I think the more education that you get and the more that you're in the plane, I think mm -hmm. that's 
how you decrease your risk. Yeah, so. I'm I'm interested to hear a little bit about some of the gear that you guys use when you're flying. Um, I know you use an, an iPad, right? For a lot of things, is that navigation? Like, what are what are you pulling up? Because I see a lot of pilots actually that are on Instagram and stuff. They all have like the iPad sitting in their lap usually, yeah. or it's like mounted on the on the dash. Yeah, the iPad's a really tangible way for us to look at um, charts and get information about airports we're going to, figure yeah. out weather information along the way. The avionics in the plane are getting good enough finally where we're starting to move away from our iPad more and more. Okay. But it can still be really nice to not have to touch any of your avionics in your plane and let the yeah. plane keep working. And then okay. you have something supplementary that you can cruise through and, and really mess with and see if you want to change your route of flight, see if you want to okay. change the altitude you're flying at, or you get hungry and you want to find a restaurant on an airport <laughs> along the way. And you're like, oh man, I'm just so hungry. The most important thing. Yes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Can't have hangry Aaron on a plane. No. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the restaurants are not in the avionics in the aircraft. So you have yeah, to yeah. you know, have your iPad there for, for it. So yeah. it's been a really good, um, as we've had older avionics in our aircraft that we've trained in, mm -hmm. there's a lot of safety features on the apps on an iPad yeah. that aren't enabled in the avionics that we're flying. Yeah. yeah. But as you continue sense. to upgrade your avionics um, in your planes, like it can get yeah. replaced. You can replace the iPad pretty quick. So. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, I, I would assume it's like hard to like constantly update the avionics in the plane just because it's probably costly and like yeah. technology changes so often. Like I could see why the iPad sort of is always updated to like the latest and greatest, um, especially when you're flying like those older planes that that maybe are not as updated exactly. um, as they probably should be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do exactly. you guys, I'm curious about like the renting, because you said like during COVID, you guys would like rent a plane. Do you, is it like, you know, renting a car where you get to like pick your plane? Do you have a choice or is it like whatever's available? This was something that blew my mind. You you have a choice uh, to some degree, but also you have to be checked out in it by an instructor. But okay. at, once you're a pilot, you can theoretically rent planes like anywhere in wow. um, in the U.S. and potentially around the world as well. If like you have to jump through some more hoops, but yeah. Um, for example, we've gone Hawaii before on vacation. And we've called up some flight clubs or flight schools, and we've been able to get checked out in their plane and actually rent their plane. And, wow. uh, and then we can go and fly around Maui and fly around like other islands when we're based in Oahu. Dang, that's um, crazy. Here, though, like we currently are checked out in two aircraft, and we can go and fly those aircraft um, whenever there's availability. We just book yeah. ourselves in just like a airbnb you know you see the schedule and you're like oh, yeah. there's availability and then you just book yourself in and you go to the airport you grab the keys and you jump in the plane so it really is very easy it's it's a side of aviation i never knew yeah. before yeah. isn't it that's that's awesome to hear um and you guys are actually building your own plane right what? Yes, possibly. <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> we're, we're definitely on the market to, yeah. to build our Any own Any listeners plane. out there? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're hoping to um, next year. So we're in talks and stuff. We've been looking around um, at different aircraft and yeah. um, kind of narrowing it down. But um, really kind of thinking aircraft? that 2025 will be yeah. hopefully... I hope so. Knock on wood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully the time that we get to like start that. And That's start awesome. That journey. And, and what kind of aircraft are you guys looking at potentially? So we're looking at something that there's, there's a couple out there that like will fit this, that could fit this mark for us. Um, we're looking at something that can take us off airport. So okay. we want to land on more sandbars. Yeah. And awesome. then uh, we want something that can go fast and take us pretty far. Yeah, and so there's a couple aircraft that that look really good. Um, uh, yeah, look really good on paper. So we got to fly a couple this weekend, which were fun. We flew a Patriot, um, and then we flew a Bush, uh, a Bearhawk. Bear excuse me, a Bearhawk. And um, these are so, yeah, so there, American. Like these there. names are so American. And they are. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Truly. Awesome. But it's fun. Like, so, okay, this is another side of aviation that I feel a lot of people are like, you did what? So we, 
we're looking at building our own plane. And they actually, like, yeah, Garrett's, he gave me the side eye. <laughs> Garrett's like, like, I'm definitely not going up with you now. Hey. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> so I originally went to school for mechanical engineering, like, grew oh, up in the car world. So, like, I know, like, you buy an old car, you restore it, that's fine. Or there's, like, kit cars. Is it yeah. the same thing where there's, like, kit planes? Exactly. exactly. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so uh, we get a kit from a manufacturer, and um, each kit can be at different stages in the process of the build. So there's something called a quick build kit from a lot of these that has the most amount done in the plane that is like legally possible to oh, wow. say that I built it myself. Okay. And there's benefit in me being able to say that I built it myself. Like um, I get to do more maintenance on it. I learn yeah. more about the plane. I can modify it. You know, if I want to put a bike rack on the wing so we can like get bikes in the or something like that. Um, yeah. Then, can you do that? Then, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Um, I don't know that we will do that, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you can. If some people have. Yeah. So it gives us ability to make the plane really our own and we can change yeah. things about it where a plane that we go and buy just from a factory or something, a certified yeah. aircraft, you can't change a lot about them. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you guys get to like, well, you get to pick out like color and like seats. Oh man, that's awesome. That's oh, yeah. I know right. that'll be the fun part. <laughs> I know. Are you guys like on the same page as far as like what you like? We don't know. What you like we were just oh. talking about this the other day. I was like, man, if we had to like decide right now, I'm like, oh, we're yeah. such like neutrals people and like what we wear. But I'm like, yeah. I love the idea of having some color so it stands out. Like you know, the photo side, like yeah, like, maybe like a red <laughs> plane stands out from the scenery a bit more. But then I'm like, yeah, we're also such neutral people. Like yeah, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Like a desert tan would also be kind of baller yeah, i think too that would be yeah yeah i can see that too is there is there any concern with safety and color or can you really just pick what mm. you what you like as far as planes go that's a really good question um you can pretty much pick what you want yeah and i think the safety on you're probably i'm guessing you're thinking like other planes being able to see your plane is that yeah. kind of what you're thinking yeah yeah so we have technologies in the aircraft that kind of let other planes know where we're at. Yeah. And I think we rely on those more, those in the lights. Visible. The yeah. Plane, in the lights. You know, yeah. Like our lights are very bright, you know, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. uh, I think those are the two things more yeah. than the paint color. The other thing though is too, is like, you do think like, you know, you always want to like consider this what if scenarios. Like, yeah. I mean, that's what all this like technology is in the plane is like yeah. to help you in case of like the worst thing. And so like, even in the paint, like, we probably wouldn't paint the aircraft green in case we were like going down into a forest. It's going to be harder for people to find us yeah. versus like a yellow plane or a red plane or something. Yeah, so. a little bit of color. Um, or but also like, watch me eat my words. We're going to paint the paint plane green. on it. Stand up green. <laughs> forest green. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I do not expect to go down in a forest. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, if you're going down, I'm actually kind of curious about this from uh, just your standpoint from being pilots. Like, is it better, like worst case scenario, and this will never happen. Is it better to go down on land or water? Like, are you like, what is more savable as That's far a as really like good question. landing? I would do land. Land, yeah, land, land, anything, land. Yeah. 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 yeah water. Um, there's risk of not getting out of the aircraft. And yeah. Then, you know, um, yeah, no, there's, especially in the type of aircraft we're going to be building. Mm -hmm. We can land in a very short distance. So we yeah. saw these planes land in less than 200 feet. Oh, dang. Wow. So crazy. it's shorter than a, a, f a jet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like two football fields. Right. Yeah. Like, um, uh, and so there's a lot of capability to just, Hey, there's a field land there, you know, or, mm -hmm. Hey, there's that riverbed land there. And yeah. Um, yeah. So the planes we fly like, right now, off the tires. Do that. You yes, the they're massive tires. tires. They're like <laughs> 35 inch tires. For all like that sand. Are... Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, that sounds incredibly cool. I'm I'm so excited for you guys. I hope that that happens next year. And I hope that you're able to like build out your own plane. It's kind of like people that, you know, build out their own camper vans too, right? You hear people buy the stock like Ford or Mercedes. Um, they're called Sprinter vans, I think. And yeah then they just start building them out based on like what they want and customizing them a little bit. But yeah, that's incredibly cool. Um, are you where, guys going to fly with us? Uh, yeah. At some point. <laughs> Heck sure. yeah. I mean, I will definitely be back in Phoenix because I have, 
family there. Uh, so I'll have to hit you up next time I'm in town and uh, maybe we can actually get up and uh, take some photos and stuff. That'll be really cool. Oh, that'd be so Heck fun. yeah. That'd be so yeah. fun. Yeah. What, uh, I know you guys are always traveling. Like what's, what's the next big few trips for you guys? Yeah, Utah is going to be a big one. So we'll go up there. We'll do aerobatic stuff um, and then some more like backcountry flying. So we'll be getting some like training with that of like what to look for of like when you are landing on a sandbar, like how to know it's safe. What like all these other people have done this for years, like just getting to hear about like, I don't know, get educated from them through it so that we can be safe when we do end up approaching that. Yeah. Um, This, um, So we have a lot of local travel or, you know, U.S. stateside travel this year. But then next year we are going to Europe. And this last summer, we briefly mentioned that we went to Thailand. We did this like trip around the world where we explored general aviation or like little plane aviation in Southeast Asia in a bunch of different countries. And we want to continue that in Europe this uh, this next April. So we're going to be starting over there and uh Go yeah, going from there. We're still like planning out a lot of the details, but we're excited to oh, wow. keep seeing aviation around the world. So That's really cool. And I remember this video, maybe it was, I don't know if it was last year or this year, Paul, there was like, there was a plane that you, it was like a commercial plane that you really wanted to go on. You guys had traveled a bunch of places so that you could ride on this plane. You could fly in it. What was that? I can't remember what it was now. Wait, are you, are you talking about like, was like, it, like, was like the bed on the plane? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Singapore yeah, Airlines first Singapore. class. Yeah, yeah. Tell me a little oh, bit about man. that. Was that, that oh, was like gosh. on your checklist? No, I'm, I'm totally a credit card point geek. <laughs> like I like don't get me started on credit card points. I could <laughs> like teach a course on it. I feel like it's just it's so fun to me. But um, yeah, so I w- was able to find a redemption to get on this incredible first class product on Sing- Singapore Airlines, where you walk in the suite. And there is a full like lazy boy recliner. Oh my gosh! On the right, and then on the left, you have a like a twin size bed, that's and crazy. and that's one that's one seat on the plane, and so that's Aaron's seat, and my seat was inverse. So on the left okay. was my lazy boy recliner, and the right was my twin size bed. Yeah. And then when you book both suites, they take the wall down between them, so okay. it becomes like a queen size bed, and oh then you have your gosh. chairs and stuff. It was. It was amazing. Was like it yeah. was one of those like pinch me flights, you know, like yeah. it's something that you see or I have seen for so long and to be able to experience it. I was like, like a giddy child on that <laughs> plane. Like, <laughs> How long was that flight? Not, Not long enough. Not long enough <laughs> Really? I think it was like what six hours or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like six or seven. Hours. It was not yeah. long. Um, yeah, you need like a twelve-hour flight. I that. know. <laughs> I'm like, just I don't even want off the plane at this point. Yeah. This is better than an apartment. <laughs> yeah. And then you have to like go and get back on a co- regular commercial flight, and you're like, oh, this sucks. <laughs> I know. Paul's so funny. He's like, because he's like a credit card like points dude. He like always tries to do these like international like trips like on points and getting like business class. Yeah. And so like we did. Our entire trip this summer out there, other than one flight back, was in like first or business. And then this mm-hmm. one flight back was in economy. And he's just so funny. <laughs> he's just like, I'm being touched. My legs are cramped. He's just like, <laughs> I'm like, all right, passenger princess. Like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> no, I totally get it. So last year, I was flown out by brand uh, to Zurich, Switzerland. And they were very gracious and flew me first class. And first international flight that I've ever flown in first. And I was like, Oh my God, completely spoiled. And then on my next trip out, I like, again, I started racking up those credit card points and got like the American Express Platinum. So I could just start, you know, I travel so much for work that it just made sense. And um, yeah, I upgraded on the way back from a Geneva flight and did the same. But then like, now I'm just like, well, I can't, I can't ever fly international and not be in business. It's just, I know you're ruined. You're done. (laughs) You are ruined. It's like, it's the food's better. And it's probably not, it's probably the same, but in my mind, it's better. No, (laughs) everything tastes better. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. No, a hundred percent. When they give you that hot towel at the beginning, you're like, yeah, dude, I did not really know what that was for. 
when they brought that to me the first time, I was just like, what am I supposed to do with this? And I was just like looking around at other people. I was like, okay, so it can either go on the face or like you can clean your hands. It's very nice. It's yeah. very warm. Um, actually, like kind of piping hot when they first like bring it out to you. But no, yeah, truly. it's the little things. It is. I always think those flights are so funny to like people watch people yeah. on, like first or business because everyone's just very casual. Like this yeah. is like, and Paul and I are like losing our minds. I'm like, oh no, I'm getting champagne for free like yeah what? I'm getting cashews like that are warm like it's the little things but I'm like oh absolutely what? there was like an ice cream bar that they brought out like a Sunday bar I was like Get oh my out. gosh this is amazing okay, I want to fly that airline <laughs> I, know. I think it was just like United it was just like a United flight but no way. yeah I'd never had that sort of experience and I was like oh my god this is amazing I could like pick all my <laughs> toppings and then I had like seconds after that I was just so oh, it was a proper Sunday bar yeah it was a sun like an ice cream Sunday bar they had like no Nuts and fruit and syrups and like you can just pick whatever you want. It was great. <laughs> Garrett's like, why didn't I get that for Bam? Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you know, I, I'm good with the mountain views and the helicopter flights. I'll uh, yeah. I'll suffer through a couple economy flights if I get to have lunch at like ten thousand feet. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. really fair, man. I keep thinking about those helicopter flights. That sounds incredible. Like, yeah, that sounds like a cool experience, especially up there. Yeah, it was just, I mean, it's like it's unreal scenery in itself because you're in like true Canadian rocky wilderness. And then like having never been in a helicopter to go to like 10 to 12 flights over the course of, oh yeah, I was like (laughs) the first flight, I'm like strapping in like the seatbelt doesn't get tight enough. And then I'm like (laughs) afterwards, just like, okay, it's fine. Well, because they tell you, they're like, when you get out of the helicopter, they're like, you're going to walk four feet and you're down like, they tell you at first, like you're down on all fours because it's, you know, spinny blades up top. It's a wow. legitimate concern. And then wow. by the end of the week, you're like, okay, this is, this is fine. You get off the helicopter and like the worst part that you don't really think about, or I didn't think about is like, they would come in and they would land, but it'd be a hot land, hot takeoff. So the blades stay spinning, oh, wow. which is fun until they go to lift off. And then you realize just how much downforce helicopters yeah. really make. And you're like, you're there and then you're like almost blown over on oh your my side gosh. but it's awesome <laughs> you're so crazy that's so sick. so you actually like flew it multiple times throughout the week then it wasn't just a one-time thing yeah we um so we were heli hiking for three days is the the back end of the trip that we were on and we probably we did at least two flights every day and then i was in a different group and there was one day we did like six seven flights oh my gosh so it was wow. it was a lot of helicopter time Dang. That's wow, amazing. that's so cool. Heli hiking. That's next level. I know. I, know. I, I had to like <laughs> Google what that was when they like it was like on the sheet of things he was gonna do. And I was like, what the heck is heli hiking? Like <laughs> this is crazy. I was like, Barry just said it so <laughs> casually too. He's like, Yeah, so we were just heli hiking through this. Know. Like, what? That is not a normal sentence. That's what a bucket list activity right there. Surely. Yeah. No, no it, he it got some great is. shots. I'll have to share it with you guys. Yeah, oh, please, please, do. please do. I'd love to see that. Yeah. Do you guys have any ambition to, I mean, you do a lot of hiking and stuff, right? When you, when you go places, is there any like remote wilderness adventure type spots that you kind of have on your, your bucket list? Oh gosh. Honestly. So, uh, there's a ton of hiking trails on airports around the U S a lot of these grass strips have them as well. And we now have like, we have a huge list of the ones we want to go to. Um, and yeah, so just starting to like explore those on airport, uh, would that's be really crazy. Cool. And I think that's something also like cool for people to know that aren't, are thinking about getting like their pilot's license that there's things to do. Also little diners are super cute and yeah. <laughs> Vita, your Ask local Kat. one. Yeah. It was like great food. And you guys were like, yeah, there's like so many of these little airport diners that are on site that you can stop and have food. And yeah, they're all like adorable. I love them. Like that would that would just be my goal, just to go around and eat. Places. Yeah, yes. exactly. And I'm like, you don't even have to be a pilot for some of these. Like, yeah. I think a lot of people don't even realize there's like cool diners in their area that they can go. Like, yeah, watch have really good food, but also just there's planes taken off like yeah. right next to you that you can watch. And I have always loved that. My dad used to take us out to like the Nashville airport as a kids and like we would just spend the day watching planes take off. And I think that's such a fun activity. And it's cool to go to like a place where you know, there's huge windows in there and you can just watch planes all day, like take yeah. off. Really cool. That's yeah. so cool. 
Um, Aaron, great. something I wanted to ask you about before we sort of close out today, you, I saw on your Instagram page, you've been doing like these meetups with women. Is that sort of pilot related? Are they like interested? Are they also pilots? Yeah. Yeah. I started, um, yeah. So these are like all female pilots, um, or, um, girls that are interested in aviation. So when I started getting my license, um, last, I guess like a, a year and a half ago, I didn't know like really any females in aviation. I had like my instructor, but we went to a part 61 school, which is like, you're not involved in classes. It's basically like you teach yourself and then you go, you get your instruction time and then you go home. And so I didn't yeah. really like have a ton of friends that were like in aviation. And so we had just started this page and I was like, I'm going to just like be like a post on there. Hey, I'm hanging at this coffee shop. Like yeah. studying if any other like female pilots like want to come here during this time on this date like i'd love to like hang out and like study together well it yeah. turned up into a yap session but it was like amazing <laughs> and so um i met like some really good friends from there and then since then it's just grown and like a couple times a year i just do this again in hopes to like yeah. bring more like community because there's not a ton of like girls that are pilots or in aviation and so mm -hmm. i'm and we have these like organizations where you're trying to bring awareness to it, but it's really just a time for like people to come together um, and just like form friendship with no like ulterior motive of like trying to like um, grow an organization or yeah. get more people into a certain school or stuff. It's just really like to build community. And um, yeah, I've like really, really enjoyed it. And that's Paul and I are cool. like huge on community. <laughs> that's no, that's great. It's great to build community because it does sometimes feel like a small world when you're sort of in it every day and, there was a ton of women that showed up for your, your meetup and are they mostly yeah. local to Phoenix or are they traveling from other places? Yeah, most of them are local. Um, this time we had some people, um, come in from like Prescott. So they drove in like for two hours. Um, other times we had people from Tucson. So like coming up two hours or my first one I ever did, there was only like five girls, but one of them flew across the States. Like she had wow. flight benefits and she was like, I'm, I think I'm going to do this. And so she hopped on a flight, Dang. came Ubered to the coffee shop. And then Paul and I dropped her back off at the airport after, but <laughs> wow. yeah, it's, it's mainly local to Phoenix. Um, yeah. we started to get people like, after I do those events, like, Hey, if you ever in Florida, you should do one. <laughs> yeah. So I think like next time we're like popping around a little bit more, maybe in Florida, especially, um, yeah. cause we go there like, I don't know, like once a year or so. Okay. Like maybe we'll do another one, but that's so awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. I'm glad you you do that. And I could totally see the benefit of like building a community of people and you know, you guys are kind of all in it. It's like it's a hobby. I mean, it really is like a hobby and a job for some people too. But yeah. um do you don't have any ambitions like either of you to turn it into like a job per se, right? Not like the typical like yeah. airline or like corporate. Um yeah. we're really enjoying what we're doing. I think like aviation, we want to like general aviation, we're slowly turning it into a career, but more in like the non like traditional way of like content creation. Um, and then also Paul's like has been developing an app for the past few years to help pilots oh. plan weekend adventures on and slightly off airport. And hey, so cool. we're all like, we love GA and we love that side. And so we really want to like, um, career wise, like just turn it into more of like, I don't know, inspiring people to use it, the flying more for an adventure than just to check off things to get to airlines. So. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's really cool. Well, good luck, Paul, on your your app. You'll have to let me <laughs> know when it's up and running and uh, we'll be sure to share it. And then for people that are listening, if you want, you should follow them because they're awesome and their page is really cool. Um, it's Aaron and Paul Fly, right? On Instagram. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys have a YouTube channel at all? We're starting one. Dude, it oh. takes so long to edit. <laughs> <laughs> I know we talked um, yeah, about no, like doing video, bunch, but I'm just editing now. <laughs> uh, yeah, it sucks. And I, me and Garrett are like, give us photos all day long. But man, when you start to dive into video, it's a whole nother ball game. So much respect to you guys. <laughs> but you should though, because you guys are so great. And I think I think you get a lot of followers and people following your journey and honestly inspiring others to do the same. So I think it's really cool to see so many young people getting into that to that hobby and you know, knowing now that like you don't have to own your plane right off the bat, you can rent them. There's so many opportunities to fly. And um, like you said, it's not it doesn't even take that long, really a couple months, three to four months. Um, but yeah, that's really cool. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on. It was so great to talk to you again. I can't wait to visit and hang out with you guys more. Um, I'll have to let you know next time I'm in Phoenix. Please do. You two are yeah. always welcome. 
We'll yeah. go to another airport diner next time. Or <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. I forgot to tell you. So when I, when we were there, I was going to that other photo shoot that afternoon with my brother, and we were going up to uh, what is it, Roosevelt Dam, like in where the lakes oh, are. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And so we were just a couple hours outside the city, and on the way to the photo shoot, there was freaking wildfires, like thirty minutes from where we were going to oh, do yeah. the shoot. But we ended up at the campsite and. We were like, let's just see how it goes. And we were going to take astrophotography. The skies just got demolished with smoke. And so oh, we, no. were like, we ended up packing it up and heading it out of there. And I also like almost got bit by a rattlesnake. Like at what? the campsite. Excuse me? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we were packing up the truck and it was dark in this campsite. And I just hear this like noise behind. It's like it's, you know, and I look and I could just see a shadow. And I asked my brother who had a headlamp on to like shine it over and not six feet from me was a freaking rattlesnake. Yeah, I'll have to send you a picture of it. I took a picture. So. Oh, my heart would stop. Yeah, oh it was pretty scary. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. Dude, and you had a trip after <laughs> yeah, we hung out. Yeah, oh my really wild fires and rattlesnakes. Yeah, and then I was like also in the ER for like eight hours because of my yeah. freaking asthma. But all good. Ended up safe. We got out of there. But <laughs> it was a pretty epic trip. <laughs> yeah, I'd say. Yeah, and Pat, I'm... still come back to Arizona. We're not the Wild <laughs> yeah. West all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, I was joking with you guys like while we were out at the uh, at the hangar shooting, there was like a literal tumbleweed that was like going yeah. by. And it's just so funny. <laughs> it was funny. It really is. Yeah, but I, I just didn't like having lived in Arizona, I, you know, we checked our backyard for scorpions and stuff. But like, I just I don't know why I didn't even think that snakes would be a probability out there. Like, of yeah. course, we're in the freaking mountains and by water. So like, of course, there's going to be a lot of critters and stuff and there was a ton of bats flying around us. It was crazy, but really, wow! We ended up, yeah, we got out of there. It was all all good. No fire, no animal bites. But it was scary because <laughs> we were also probably an hour from town, and both of yeah. us lost service when we were there. So I was like, "We can't call for help. Like we're literally going to be screwed if one of us gets bit by the snake." Yeah, um, yeah. Your lesson own. learned. Maybe like you know, have a Garmin in reach, or I don't know, have a way yeah. to reach someone yeah. if you're like out in the wilderness. <laughs> Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> There's <really>. rattlesnakes. <laughs> you talk about tech we fly with, and that's one thing we always take with us is the Garmin in reach. It's good. Yeah. I have For one and I didn't scenario. bring it. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was just like, why didn't I bring this? I have this thing that I pay for every month and I don't yeah. bring it with me, of course. It's so stupid. Well, you're um, just camping in Phoenix. I know. Know. We were only going to be there for like a few hours. So I was like, it's going to be fine. And yeah, immediately we lost service at the campsite. We're like, well, if something goes down, we're like out here alone. So hopefully oh we can. <laughs> That but it's uh, it's a good story in the books for for that so one. No and, Roosevelt uh, Dam for us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it was actually honestly so beautiful. I'll have to send you the spot. Um, there's a there's an area with like uh, I can't remember. It was a uh, Apache Lake actually that we were at. Oh yeah. It was so beautiful, and then watching the sun go down in that area, minus the the smoke <laughs> from the wildfires. Um, yeah, it was it was absolutely gorgeous and. I love seeing like water in the desert. Something about that. Yeah. I mean, obviously water out in like wilderness with forests is beautiful, but there's just something about like a big lake or a river in the desert, I think is really pretty. Yeah. And then you have the swirl cactuses, like yeah. the, the lakes and the, the dry rocks around the lakes. There's something like. It's really pretty. Yeah. It is really pretty. Cool. Cool. Well, again, thank you guys for jumping on. We had the best time shooting and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get to see you guys again soon. I agree. It was yeah. so fun, like getting to hang out. So thanks, Sarah. Th yeah. Thanks, thanks for having thanks us. Thanks for having yeah, us. Yeah, of course. Of course. Awesome. Until next time. Bye.